Over the years, many of you have requested builds for venomous reptiles. One of those is the variable bush viper. These are a great candidate for intricate setups because of their behaviors and relatively small size. For this build, I'm working with the 36 by 18 by 24 Exoterra. I got the internal measurements and cut down some XPS foam accordingly. I'll carve these down to get the appropriate look. To minimize the amount of mess and to get the general shape, I removed large sections with a kitchen knife. Believe it or not, this actually works extremely well. I also ran the knife along the surface to create texture. An easy way to get even more texture is with a wire brush drill bit. I used this to make things look like dirt or mud. I began with the side pieces so that I could account for them on the back. Then I transferred their shape along the edges so I know where not to carve. I repeated the process from before to create the details. Once I got the texture just right, I went back with a heat gun. This tightens up the surface, which makes it more rigid and strong. An issue with these boards is that there are slits within the foam. They don't cause structural issues, but they'll create an inconsistent aesthetic. I mixed up some grout to hide these lines. I painted it onto various areas and let it dry. To bring the look full circle and to get that muddy vibe, I'll cover the surface with dry lock. As I've shown before, I get white tintable dry lock and mix it up with concrete pigments. Anyway, I like to begin with black dry lock and cover the entire surface. This will help establish the detail once we move on to the subsequent layers. This layer takes a while because it needs to get into all the crevices. I let it dry and mixed up some brown dry lock. Then I loaded up the brush with a little bit of paint. I went over the surface and covered the raised areas of the background. This helps bring out the details. The result is something that makes a pretty cool aesthetic. I couldn't stop there though, I wanted to include branches. Mupani wood seemed like a great choice since it originates from Africa like the snakes. Plus it's an awesome type of driftwood that I think is underutilized. Anyway I started with the back panel. I situated the largest piece and worked in a few accents. I wanted the sides to blend really well with the direction of this one, so what I did was line up the pieces and dry fit the wood. Once I liked the placement, I went back to lock in the branches. A little dab of expanding foam along the contact points is more than sufficient to make it happen. After the foam cures, the expanded areas must be removed for a cohesive aesthetic. I typically do this by hand, but some areas will require tools. After that, I went back with the smaller brush and painted it like before. If some gets on the wood in the process, it's not a big deal. In fact, it can actually help blend everything together. The end result is something I think looks great, which should also function well for the snakes. It will give them areas to climb and bask on while retaining a good bit of floor space. With that complete, I was able to send the backgrounds down to Florida. I wanted them installed prior to my arrival so I could quickly finish the setup. Before that though, they needed a thorough rinse. Normally I do that myself, but conditions in Pennsylvania are less than ideal right now, so I had Will do it. He thoroughly rinsed them down and allowed them to dry. From there, he went on to install the panels with silicone. It's easiest to start with the back panel. You can apply silicone to the tank or the background itself. Either way, everything should line up well if the measurements are correct. It also helps to weigh down the panels while the silicone cures and to install them one at a time. A few days later I arrived in Florida and was able to complete the job. Here's how the tank looked upon arrival. To make things easier I removed the doors. To do so you just pull up on the bottom until it pops out of place. Along with the background I also sent down the other materials needed such as the substrate components. For this mix I went with cocoa fiber, orchid bark, tree fern fibers, black sand, aqua soil, cocoa chips, horticultural charcoal, and sphagnum moss. I mixed it all together. As is it was kind of dry so I added water as I mixed. This rehydrated the sphagnum moss and other components. The result is something which will retain water while remaining fluffy and light. This will help promote the overall health of the environment. Like most vivariums, this will include a false bottom. 
I decided to go with Lika. We rinsed it off and let it soak so that the clay could absorb water. This will remove excess debris and increase humidity. I built up a pretty decent layer in the bottom of the enclosure. Prior to this, I made a few measurements. I used these to cut out a sheet of geotextile fabric, which will act as a barrier. I cut it out slightly larger than the aforementioned measurements so that it creates a lip of sorts. This will further assist in keeping substrate out of the false bottom. I built up a fairly substantial layer. Like usual, I sloped it up toward the back to create a greater sense of depth. Moving up to the background, I went on to include more details. I glued patches of sphagnum moss in a few areas. This will add more variation and make things less monotonous. It will also create a growing surface for some of the plants. Once the glue dried, I sprayed down the moss. I'll also include some DIY jungle vines that Will made. I've shown how to do this before with cotton rope or nylon. You coat the rope in silicone and drag it through cocoa fiber. Once the silicone cures, the result is something that functions really well as a vine. Anyway, I weave these throughout the canopy to add some variation and interest. As before, I used super glue to secure them to various points. I think the end result looks pretty good. Now we can move to the plants. I've selected a nice variety that should do well in this environment and hold up to the snakes. Like usual, I took the plants down to the bare roots. First, I removed what I could by hand. Then I went back and sprayed down the roots and foliage. It's a time consuming process, but well worth the effort. For additional precaution, it's a good measure to quarantine the plants as well. I didn't have that luxury for this build though. Anyway, I started in the left of the enclosure with the calathea. This filled in a lot of the space and hid the scene between the background panels. I put one in the center as well. In the top right of the branches, I included a bird's nest fern. This will provide great canopy cover and refuge for the snakes. Moving down to the bottom, I decided to add more hardscape. I buried some cork bark rounds in the substrate near the midground. I built up more substrate behind them to create variation in the landscape, which improves the sense of depth. I added smaller plants throughout to complete the vibe. Let's make it bioactive. To start, I included some springtails. These are a huge component because they'll help clean up after the animals and address any mold that could sprout up. I included some powder orange isopods as well. These will help take care of any substantial waste. For now, I included a standard water bowl, but I'll send a custom one later which will match with the background. To finalize the look, I added various botanicals and seed pods. I sprinkled in leaf litter as well. This will provide refuge for the cleanup crew and nourishment for the plants as they're broken down. I topped it off with a few patches of pillow moss. The end result is something pretty nice and fairly natural looking if you ask me. The snakes need a good canopy area since they're arboreal, but they'll readily make use of the forest floor as well, so I tried to get a good balance of the two. The canopy coverage is especially important and will only improve with time as the plants mature. There's nothing left to do now but add the snakes. Will has three different color morphs which we'll call this setup home, yellow, green, and orange. The snakes appeared to feel at home immediately. They hid in the foliage, coiled up on the branch, and chilled on the forest floor. It was an incredible sight to see because I haven't worked with animals like this before. They're really neat. They have a very deliberate and graceful demeanor as they move throughout. What do you think? I'd imagine that like myself, most of you are not going to keep venomous animals. 
That said, something similar to this can be done for a variety of other reptiles and amphibians. Anyway, these are my friend Will Nace's. He works with a lot of venomous snakes and other critters you likely will never see in my animal room. Check out his channels if you want to learn more. That's all for now though. As always, I hope you enjoyed the build and learned something new. I'll leave you with Will's reaction. The audio is a little messed up, but it is what it is. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace. Check it out. I'm excited, bro. The, the doors aren't on, but... Oh, you took them off? Yeah. Dope. Holy cow, bro. That's awesome. It's legit? Yeah. Did you steal some of my moss? Yeah. <laughs> no, dude, that looks so good. Too. Oh, my little rope vines? Yeah. You know where I learned to make those? Maybe, maybe me. I don't know. Yeah, actually you. Yeah. Those, those are like first generation vines. Dude, it looks so good. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Dude, that looks so sick. <laughs>